Hello, Mr. Guinness. Mr. Fisher here. You remember me? I rang you last week about the 8,000 foot shelf. Yes. Well, Ray, your book, I see that you state in your 11th edition, page 376, column 2, paragraph 4, between the 7th word and the 22nd word inclusive, that the tallest living Northern European sycamore tree is 122 feet high. Yes. Well, I have just measured the great Northern European sycamore tree of Kentish Town. Situate in territorial propinquity, approximate to the posterior egress of the informant's habitat. Yes, outside my back door, yes. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Ah, uh, sorry about your window, Squire. Have you... have you just... What? Is this the... have you just... Yeah, I just... Uh, I just chopped it down, yeah. The great sycamore of Kentish Town? Yeah. You've just cut it down, just now? Yeah. I don't believe it. It's fantastic. Can't have taken you more than 30 seconds. No, about, uh 28.4, I think. Here's this a record. My Alsatian smokes a pipe A man in Wigan often eats A hundred yards of tripe A Japanese who lives in Crete Can play the bagpipes with his feet And now he's touring round Brazil in bittersweet Is this a record? Is this a record? There's a pad of talks in Welsh And Mrs. Braithwaite says she has a goldfish that can belch An organ player in Hong Kong Who's also expert at mahjong Has got a keyboard 99 feet long Is this a record? Is this a record? There's a man who's ten feet tall And late last Friday evening It was snowing in Bengal A Russian who throws javelins Consumes for breakfast 30 gins Now they say he's also given birth to twins Which simply has to be Beyond a doubt, quite certainly A real earth-shaking, epoch-making Record-breaking record If you want to get into the Guinness Book of Records, there are roughly two ways of going about it. To be the first at doing something, or to be the fastest at it. It's better, in fact, to be the first, because then you stay in the book forever. Whereas if you're the fastest, somebody might come along later and be a bit faster and take your record. Perhaps the most exciting first in sport was the breaking of the four-minute mile. For years, people thought this was impossible. And then, on the 6th of May, 1954, Roger Bannister ran the mile in 3 minutes, 59.4 seconds. Could he do it now? Yes, lengthening his amazing stride, this was Bannister's answer. Battling against unfavorable conditions, a crosswind and a sodden track. Up to the finishing line, shattering the four-minute mile, the Everest of athletic achievement. Throughout the winter, I've been watching the newspapers, seeing whether Landy would do it first or whether Santee would do it first in America. And I, I'm very glad that, that it has come from England in the end. I'd also like to claim 28.4 seconds for the British all-comers' most speedy act of arboreal severance, also the worst act of vandalism ever committed, oh, and the longest single strand of spaghetti ever cooked al dente by a female Cambodian person, 174 yards, 2 feet, 9 inches. I'm sorry? Well, if I could do that, Mr Guinness, it would be a record. Another great heroic first was Sherpa Tenzing and Edmund Hillary's conquest of Everest. And the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Not all records are sporting or heroic. Many are made just for the hell of it, like the speed shaving record held by Jerry Harley. Jerry, in one hour, shaved 130 men. When was this? On the 1st of April, 1971. Whereabouts? At the playoff, Gillingham in Kent. Now Jerry is going to strip off his dressing gown, pick his sharpest razor, and give you a demonstration of his dexterity. Wow. 
Why is he wearing a red shirt? Are you ready? Yeah, fine. To the watch. Now, just watch the things. One slip of the wrist and I could be semi-detached. Are you ready? Yeah, fine. Go! <laughs> I should imagine that the most frustrating record attempts were made when man first tried to fly. The fate of poor Icarus, flying too close to the sun and melting his wax wings, happily did not deter a number of other ingenious gents throughout the centuries from attempting bizarre experiments in travelling other than on the surface of the earth. people who collect these records. What sort of people are they? You know, darling, one is forced to admit that we are living in a changing world. And not, I might add, changing noticeably for the better. You sound depressed. Well, it is depressing, isn't it? I mean, just as you've got used to the fact that the world record for two-egg omelette making stands at 77 and a half an hour, along comes Clement Freud and makes 105 in 26 minutes, 25 seconds. And the same thing goes for drinking beer upside down eating prunes, and three-legged races. What on earth do you know all those things? I just know. Thanks for your book of records, Willie. I won me bet. Willie won't fraud. Anyway, this drinks the one thing that never changes. The record breakers, God bless them. As we're supposed to be on about records, here are some on flying. The first power-driven flight was at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, in 1903. The plane was piloted by Orville Wright and built by him and his brother Wilbur. The English Channel was first flown by Monsieur Blériot in 1909. The first non-stop Atlantic flight was made in a Vickers Vimy aircraft piloted by Captain Alcock and Lieutenant Whitten Brown. They ended up in an Irish bog but the record was theirs forever. The largest passenger carrying aircraft is the Boeing 747, the Jumbo. The smallest aircraft ever to have flown is the Spitz Sky Baby, with a wingspan of just seven foot two inches. Seven inches wider than that. Another intriguing record is for long-distance bagpipe playing. This was established in April 1969 when William Donaldson, Donald Grant, John Lovey and William Wotherspoon of Aberdeen University bagpeeped for 50 hours. A local inhabitant was heard to remark, Thank God there's no smell. The apple peeling record. The longest single unbroken apple peel on record was 76 feet long. It was peeled by Fritz Waffler in 1970. Here is a dramatic reconstruction of the actual peeling. Apple peeling, scene one, take one. And... Action! <laughs> huh. Apple peeling, scene one, take 78. Action. Cut! 1970 also saw the longest arrow shot in history. And in 1970, Robert Gardner of Stroud, Gloucestershire, heaved a household brick weighing five pounds a distance of 135 feet, eight inches. record distance 
of a human cannonball is 175 feet. The cannonball in question was Signor Emmanuel Zacchini, whose muzzle velocity was 145 miles per hour. Soccer. I suppose every dedicated follower of footer has his own favourite player, but there's no argument about the outstanding achievements of Edson Arentes do Nascimento, otherwise known as Pele. In 901 games, he scored 1,026 goals. The most prolific mother in the world was a Russian, Madame Vassilet, who had 69 children. Among the brood were 16 pairs of twins, seven sets of triplets, and four sets of quads. Probably the most famous quintuplets in history were the Dion Quins. Their average weight at birth was two pounds, 11 ounces. At the other end of the scales, how about these bonny bouncing boys? Bill and Ben, the McCreary twins, combined weight in March 1970, 92 stone, 12 pounds. And now, money. Money, 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 money. The youngest ever millionaire was Shirley Temple, who acquired her little pile before the age of 10. The highest ever annual income was in 1927 when $105 million was acquired by Al Capone. That was nearly twice Henry Ford's income. All Mr Ford could manage to scrape together was a measly 25 million pounds. <laughs> Best thing about having a vast quantity of money is that you can chuck it away or you can give it away. Andrew Carnegie gave away 70 million pounds, providing, amongst other things, 2,811 libraries and 7,689 church organs. The largest organ in the world, and the loudest, is in Atlantic City, New Jersey, USA. And the loudest pipe in the organ is six times louder than the shrillest train whistle. And the whole thing has a volume of 25 brass bands. Which brings us to piano smashing. The record for demolishing a piano is 2 minutes 26 seconds. at all with the piano there, a plucky effort though, by the Royal Marines. And now it's the violins. Every one of these, of course, a genuine Stradivarius, the sixth there being laid in position. And here he comes, Corporal Paul Vandal of the Second Mutilier. Straight to A beautiful, beautiful exhibition there, sheer speed and the crowd giving him their plaudits. And here's Sapper Alistair Proust of the Army Catering Corps having a go at the bagpipe. Lovely technique here by this big Scotsman who, until quite recently, was just a pile of rubble. In goes the knife. Out come the innards. And the crowd here really enjoying that. And here's Corporal Ernest Stormdahl of the Anti-Woodwind Brigade chucking in here to a genuine 18th century flute. Quite beautifully there. Oh, and there's the clarinet slicer working away, as of course it will throughout the afternoon. And now, always a moving moment, this. The cello. Ah! <laughs> so 
much for the cello. And in the foreground there, we have the entire brass section of the Halle Orchestra. And uh, this is an event that's always popular here as Lance Corporal Sigmund Freud, no relation incidentally of the swimmer, but a grand nephew of the Austrian psychiatrist sort of fellow who was putting the fire in there. And uh, now we can see fairly clearly that these effeminate artifacts have been reduced to, to a molten uh, heap of, 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 of something. And now a hush falls over the crowd. Stuff the recumbent lieutenant right through the wait for it drum. Oh, first class. Very good. And now finally we come to the great climax of a wonderful day's devastation. The pre concord winner, the entire London Symphony Orchestra, reduced to a three-foot cube. And and I've just heard that the Boston Pops is in there as well. As this is about the Guinness collection of records, it'd be churlish not to mention that Guinness themselves hold a record. It's for the export of ale, stout and beer. In the year 1970, they exported 1,135,000 imperial bells, the equivalent of 1,795,886 half pints every day of the year. having sleepless nights wondering what the limbo dancing record is. That is the lowest height the pole has been set without the limbo dancer either touching the ground or knocking the pole off. The answer is six and a half inches. The record holder is Teresa Marquis of St. Lucia and she did it in a depot in Belfast. For those of you interested in that sort of thing, there is a face slapping record. It was set in Kiev in the USSR in 1931. The duration was 30 hours. There's Vasily Batsovsky, the champion, getting some last minute tips from his manager. And here's Emily Goronov, Miss Comintern of 1928, now one of Russia's top lady slappers. And uh, there's the referee, Mr. Arthur Stalin from Wales, giving them last minute instructions, checking there. And he's, ah, oh, a foul already, he's found some knuckle dusters, and, and uh, Batovsky's name goes in the book, and Batovsky started, Stalin warns him. And they're off. A gentle limbering up, right, a good right back, and a left, and a right, and a right, and a left, and a left, and Gorilov is going well, Gorilov's going very well indeed, Gorilov's really getting them in there. Gorilov's going with the left, and left, and right. And left to the right, and Stalin is right, and there's a right into the solar plexus, that's a foul, and Stalin is right, and Stalin got stuck, and now it's getting for the crowd. My goodness, he is good replaced, Perting is a national sport. But anyway, that's all from Face Lap in Kiev for today, so join us again next week for putting the boot in from Moscow. Golf is a marvellous game for records. Almost everybody who plays, every club, every country has one of its own. Here's one. In the USA, the Professional Golfers Association record for the longest drive held by the great Jack Nicklaus is 341 yards. There is great satisfaction in hitting things extremely hard. Here's Gary Sobers hitting six sixes in one over in a cricket match between Nottingham and Glamorgan. It is generally agreed that the world's oldest record is held by St. Daniel Stylitis, who in the 5th century sat on top of a column in Syria for 33 years, 3 months. It is time that record was broken. See you in about 34 years. Yes.
this a record? There's a pot of talks in Welsh And Mrs. Braithwaite says she has a goldfish that can belch An organ player in Hong Kong Who's also expert at mahjong Has got a keyboard 99 feet long Is this a record? Is this a record? There's a man who's ten feet tall And late last Friday evening it was snowing in Bengal A Russian who throws javelins Consumes for breakfast 30 gins Now they say he's also given birth to twins Which simply has to be, beyond a doubt, quite certainly A real earth-shaking, epoch-making, record-breaking record, breaking record.